as some of you have requested me i'm starting a new initiative in which i'll complete the entire course of mme2 and i'll try to complete this by february so you can watch the videos whenever you want because it is one of the toughest paper this semester so i'll i'll be doing covering all of this now starting with chapter 12 we have system of linear equations now if we have a system like this a1 to x2 plus a1n xn equals to b1 so these are the coefficients whereas the variables are x1 x2 xn and these are the coefficients so suppose if i write m1 x1 plus a m2 x2 plus a m n x n equals to b m and this is the first equation second so in total we have m linear equations and the number of variables are x1 till xn this is called the right hand side so far this must be basic and once we try to find these values we'll get a solution for this system of equations so the solution set can be written as s which is s1 s2 till sn where so this suggests that x1 equals to s1 would solve for this simultaneously x2 equals to s2 will, will solve for this and xn equals to sn would also solve for this so this is a solution but this is not the same thing as s2 s1 and then rest are same or any other value so the first element would correspond to x1 second to x2 then x3 and then x n okay now if the system the system of linear equation has at least one solution at least one solution then we say it is consistent but in case if the system doesn't have any solution zero solution then we say the system is inconsistent okay i hope this much was clear this you might have studied in your 11th and 12th as well now coming to the important model leontief model so these types of model were operated in soviet economy soviet union which was a command economy i'll tell you the major features of this the most important one is that the resources are being owned by the state so they can decide how much to produce also the different industries are interdependent so i'll give you an example suppose if we are talking about the three sectors of the economy agriculture industry and services so what does it the term interdependent means that the agricultural output whatever we get in the agriculture is used and as an input in industry and the agriculture output is also used as an input in the services sector also the agriculture output suppose we are talking about seeds they are used as an input in agriculture as well so basically and similarly this will go for industry and services sector as well so whatever we produce in the industry that would be used as an input to produce the good in industry as well in services as well and in agriculture as well similarly we can interpret it for the services sector so this means that an individual on the top who has the 
knowledge about the resources of the country can accordingly allocated between the three sectors such that the demand for the final goods is being able to met now okay so i guess this was clear now moving on forward suppose this is the coefficient this is the most important coefficient that we we are supposed to study this suggest that the input required aij suggest the input required of ith industry to produce 1 unit of jth good so basically if agriculture to industry is 0.2 which means 0.2 units of agriculture output is required to produce 1 unit of industry output i hope this was clear because the most important is the interpretation only now suppose we want to produce a total of suppose we want to produce a total of xj amount of goods now the total ith input required so for 1 unit of j the output required is aij the 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 output of ith unit which is used as an input to produce 1 unit of j is aij now if i want to produce xj units of j then the input of i required would be input of i required is a i j into x j so this is the total amount of i which is required as an input to produce x j amount of the good okay so suppose we are starting with the case that there are n goods and all of them are interlinked so the thing is the first good would be required to produce the second good as well and so so how will we will start is and the most important thing is the first good is itself required to produce the first good itself so the total demand of the first good would be so if you want to produce x1 units of the first good and this is the input required of the first good to produce first good itself so this is the total of unit of a uh, total of good one that is required as an input that is required as an input to produce x1 so look at this a11 denotes the unit of good one which are being used as an input to produce one unit of good two to produce this much unit of good one we required this much unit of good one and aii should always be less than one which means if you want to produce a single unit of a good of this good so the input should be less than so if you want to produce one unit of agricultural output you should not require more than one unit of industrial of agriculture output as an input so aii should be less than 1 or else it doesn't make sense because if aii is suppose 1.5 this would suggest it requires 1.5 units of agriculture output as an input to produce one unit of agricultural output itself because both are same so the first i denotes the input required of the ith good and j denotes the input required required of the ith good to produce one unit of the jth good okay i hope this was clear now moving forward 
Now suppose we are talking about the total demand of the ith good. So basically, for ith good, or the suppose we start with the first good. The demand consists of the total input demands to produce all the good and then the second the final demand because agricultural output is not being produced just to supply as inputs but people also consume it as well which we will study in macroeconomics C plus G plus I plus NX. So this is giving you the aggregate demand as well. So this is the final demand that the people want to consume. And for the good itself, the input demand consists of the various demand that is being demanded by the different sectors of the economy. So for good one, if you are talking about good one, initially, this is the input demand a11 x1. So this is the input demand to produce x1 output. So this is the input demand of good one plus a12 x2 this means the amount of good one which is required to produce good two x2 amounts of good two the total means this then similarly since we have n goods a13 x3 till a1 n xn so this is the total input demand and now the final demand which was being given by this this thing this we assume is b1 so this plus b1 will give you the total demand of good one so ideally at equilibrium this should be equals to the total supply because total demand consists of two things first the input demand of that particular good and then the final demand and when this is equal to total supply it should be equals to x1 so this is what we have got for good one now similarly for good two it would be a21 x1 this means the the coefficient a21 means the amount of good two which is used as an input to produce one unit of good one the amount of input of good to that is used to produce one unit of good one so this is the total demand because if you want to if you want to produce x1 unit so this is the total demand of good 2 which is required to produce x1 units then a22 x2 this means the total demand of good 2 which is used as an input to produce one unit of good 2 plus a23 x3 till a 2n xn plus b 2 equals to x2 so this is the final demand for good 2 Similarly, we'll have for all other things. So the equations, the set of equations would be a12 x2 plus a1n xn plus b1 equals to x1. First equation. And this is also called as the input output method. Input output model. This is also called as the input output model till we had n goods a n1 x1 plus a n2 x2 plus a n n xn plus b n should be equals to xn now we can solve this in the matrix form as well taking all these elements to the right side we have b1 equals to x1 
वन माइनस ए वन वन माइनस ए वन टू एक्स टू माइनस टिल माइनस ए वन एन एक्स एन देन सिमिलरली बी टू इक्वल्स टू माइनस ए टू वन एक्स वन प्लस वन माइनस ए टू टू एक्स टू एंड देन माइनस माइनस ए टू एन एक्स एन देन द लास्ट वुड बी माइनस ए एन वन एक्स वन माइनस ए एन टू एक्स टू माइनस 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 दिस वुड बी प्लस वन माइनस ए एन एन एक्स एन सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न इन द फॉर्म बी इक्वल्स टू द बी विच इज द मेट्रिक्स बी वन बी टू टिल बी एन आई माइनस ए इन टू एक्स वेयर आई माइनस ए इज वन माइनस ए वन वन माइनस ए वन टू माइनस टिल गोइंग टिल माइनस ए वन एन सो I am marking these coefficients. These are the coefficients. These coefficients. These coefficients. These coefficients. So minus a two one one minus a two two, and till minus a two n. Minus a n one, minus a n two, one minus a n n. So this is one minus into x one is x one x two. x n so this is the input output matrix and how can we solve this so x becomes so if we take if we pre multiply it by 1 minus a inverse inverse 1 minus i minus a inverse so this becomes this would become i minus a inverse into b equals to x and you can solve this now this a is a11 a12 a1 n a21 a22 2n till an1 an2 ann this is the technology matrix because because these coefficients itself were determining what would so this suggest a11 suggest this if this is 0.5 suppose so this suggest half unit of first half unit of first good is required to produce one unit of good one and if this is 0.3 this would mean if this is coming out to be 0.3 this would mean Point three units of good one is required to produce one unit of good two. So, this is the total input demand multiplied by x one, x two, x till x n. So this would be the total input demand of good one. Okay. So I hope the basics are clear. So these are called technology matrix, or and these a one one, a one two, these. All other things till a n one a n n, these are called input coefficients, which I have already explained. Or we can say them as technical coefficients as well. Okay, so this is not mentioned in your course, but there is some Hawkins Simon condition as well. so this suggests that the determinant of i minus a should be greater than 0 these are the two condition that should be verified as well the second condition is 1 minus a i i should be greater than 0 which makes sense logically okay so in the next video i'll solve some questions related to this i'll give you questions one example from the book and maybe two other questions